Hello, my name is Chris and in this video I'll give you a quick lesson on how to construct and use a finite state machine for pattern matching in strings. So the video will be split into four sections. Firstly, a brief overview of the problem we're trying to solve. Secondly, how to use the algorithm and construct a finite state machine. Thirdly, a quick example. And uh, finally, the computational complexity of the algorithm. So firstly, we're trying to solve the issue of string matching for non-finite patterns like regular expressions using finite state machines as opposed to other methods like lookup tables. Um, difficulty is mainly in constructing the finite state machine because once constructed it's actually really quite easy to pattern match the strings. Now a finite state machine is defined as a finite set of states, a start state, a set of accept states, an alphabet and a transition function and essentially it's a labeled directed graph now this is the algorithm we're going to use to match uh, s represents the state t the string and p the pattern so firstly we need to build the finite state machine the transition function for it and then after we've done that we simply tra traverse through the finite state machine based on the input characters moving from state to state and if we ever reach an accept state then we output the current index and after we've exhausted the input then we end and as I said before the difficult part is building the machine but it's a lot easier if you break it down into simpler parts instead of trying to do the whole pattern at once so start off some constructs of simple expressions obviously the most simplest it's a single character, it's fairly obvious, you just have a single transition to a new state. Then we've got the star operator, so for example A star, which means zero or more repetitions of A. So in this case if we just loop around in staying in the same state. Or if we've got a substring starred, then we would loop back to the start of that substring. Then we've got plus, which is one or more, or you can think of it as a followed by a star, if that's easier. Uh, it's basically a combination of the previous two. And finally we've got question mark operator, which basically means zero or one. So in this case a question mark b basically means either a b or just b. Um, it should be fairly straightforward. And obviously you can combine these for more complex expressions such as ABC plus D. So in this case, we start off doing the ABC bit. That's just straightforward. You go A and B and C, three states with transitions. Then for the plus part, because we can have more than one, we need to transition back to the first state if we read in another A to get another lot. Uh, finally, for the D, because we need at least one, we go from state 3 to state 4 with the D. So we have to have read in at least one ABC. However, obviously the machine is not complete because finite state machines must be deterministic. So every state must have a transition for each symbol in the alphabet, otherwise the behavior is not defined. So the difficulty in this varies based on the pattern, but Basically what you do is for each symbol in the alphabet that would not form a substring you create a transition back to the initial state and for every symbol that would form a substring so say for example if you've either got the first character of a pattern again or there's some repetition in your pattern so for example you've got AS, AS, B as your pattern and you read in AS, AS. If you are then to read in another A, you would have the substring AS, A again, which is passed through your pattern, and so you'd only go back to state three rather than all the way back to the first state of the initial state. Um, and you do this for every state you've got until every state has a transition for every symbol. So finishing off the example from before, so let's look at state 0 for example. Uh, you see we've got B, C and D. If we read in any of them while in state 0, we just stay in state 0. Because at that point, all we want is an A to proceed on to the next part of the pattern. 
and the same idea is used for the rest of the states. So once you've constructed your state, it's really quite easy to do the pattern matching part. You simply traverse through the finite state machine following the transitions corresponding to the next input symbol. And if an accept state is ever reached, then you'd output and you know at the end that the pattern was found in the string because you've outputted something. So, quick example now. So we've got the pattern AB, AB, CD, starred, B, and we want to match it with the string AC, AB, AB, CD, B. So first off, start constructing the finite state machine. Just break the pattern down into different parts first. So to start with, first four states are just the AB, AB part of the pattern. Simple enough. Then you've got the CD starred part. So first you read in a C from state 4, then you need to look for a D, and then after you've read in a D, you can either read in a B to go to the end, if you've, or if there's another C, you can go back to state 5, because you can have any number of CDs before reading that final B. And of course, as you can have 0, because it's a star, then from state 4 you also need a transition going to the final state for B in case there is no CD. And then we go along finishing off each state, adding in the required transitions to make it deterministic. So for state 0, that's B, C and D, which if we're in state 0, we've read in no part of the pattern yet. So if we're reading B, C or D, we just stay at state 0, because they're not the next character in the pattern. And same thing for state 1, same sort of thing for state 2, same sort of thing for state 3, except in this time, for A, if we read it in, we need to go back to state 1, because it's the first character of the pattern. We don't want to go all the way back to state 0 in that case. Same deal for state 4, except in this case, because we'll have read in A, B, A, B, if we read in another A, we've got A, B, A, B, A. We've got the substring A, B, A, which is the first three characters of our pattern, so we can go to state 3 if we read in A, rather than back to state 1. And then state 5, 6, and 7 are all kind of the same thing. If we read A, we go to state 1. Otherwise, if we read anything else that's not next, we need to go back to state 0. So now, if we do that, match it with our string, we read in the first character of A, we're in state 0. We know we need to go to state 1 from our transition diagram. We read in the next character for C. This time we need to go back to state 0, and then we read in the next A, go to state 1, the next B, go to state 2, the next A, state 3, B, state 4, C, state 5, D, state 6, and then B finally to state 7, and as state 7 is our final state, it's an accepting state, we need to output, and then because we've exhausted all the input, we end the function. And we saw that as we output, then the string passed, and we see all that the pattern was indeed in the string. So now for computational complexity, it's fairly straightforward. For constructing, it's simply big O of M times the size of the alphabet, where M is the size of the pattern, because we've got one state for each character in the pattern, and then each of those states requires one transition per symbol in our alphabet, which gives us our total. And uh, for matching, it's simply big theta of n, where n is the length of our string, because obviously all we do is for each character in the string, we do one transition and then read the next character and do another transition for that and so on. So we do one step for each symbol in the string. And there's just a reference where the algorithm and the computational complexity values are used came from. And that is everything. Thank you for listening, and I hope this has helped you to learn how to use finite state machines for string matching.